اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session, we are going to talk about measurement model invariance across groups, IBM SPSS AMOS. Measurement model invariance across groups. Now with SEM requiring a large sample size, it is pretty common to collect data from two different methods such as online service or face-to-face -face service. You will also come across instances where you are serving two different groups but still trying to use the same measures for each group. Maybe you are collecting data from male and female. Maybe you are collecting data from two different cities. Maybe you are collecting data from two different countries. A measurement model invariance test is often required in such cases when you've got different groups or data being collected through two different methods. Now this test is done to determine if the factor loadings of indicators in a CFA do not differ across those groups. You will often see this test performed and it is required by the reviewers as well when you have survey groups and your survey items are slightly altered because of the group dynamics. As an example, let's say if you were asking first time customers and repeat customers the same questions but needed to make sure that the meaning of the indicators have not changed now that one group has more experience with the service. So in order to make sure that both groups perceive and understand the indicators in a similar manner, you need to perform measurement model invariance. A measurement model invariance test determines if your indicators are actually measuring the same thing across groups. That is, the understanding of the indicators, the understanding of the statements does not change with the change of groups. If there is lack of measurement invariance, this indicates that the meaning of unobservable construct is shifting across groups or possibly over time. Ultimately, what you are looking for is that if factor structure of your CFA is equivalent across groups, you want to establish measurement model invariance. So lack of invariance will mean that with the change of the groups, there is a change in the understanding of the indicators. Now there are five potential invariance tests to assess if you have differences in your indicators across groups. However, we are not going to look into all those five potential invariance tests. We are going to look into just two of them that are normally required by the reviewers. The first test that needs to be performed is called configural invariance. This test initially will examine if the overall structure of your measurement model is equivalent across groups. In a sense, you are assessing the extent to which the same number of factors best represent the data for both groups. So what you are doing is you are just comparing your measurement model across the groups. And if the measurement model is similar across the groups, this establishes configural invariance. Now let's say I've got two groups in my data. And to accomplish this, I will need two group analysis, which will examine if model fit is established across the groups. If strong model fit is present across both groups, then you can say with confidence that the data is invariant across the groups from a configural or structural perspective. That is, it has got configural invariance. Now, the first step is we have to establish our groups. Now, how do we do this? Let's have a look. So I've got two groups here. I've got male and female. So how do I establish groups in my data? Let's go to Amos. Now here is the model that I want to test for measurement model invariance. So what I will do first is make sure that I've got the data. Yes, I've got the data. Now here you will see all the groups in your data. In this case, there is only one group. So I will double click on it. And let's say I'll name it. The first group is male. 
click new and the second group is female click close now you've got two groups in your data now i need to link this to my data as well how to do this just click here select data file and you will see mail complete original now in this case i need to define my grouping variable for my data as well so what i'll do is let's say first let's do it for mail click grouping variable and here is my grouping variable and now the group value so mail is represented by one and press ok now let's do this for female but we need the file first so select this file now what's the grouping variable the grouping variable is gender now in the grouping variable what's the value that is representing female just like one was representing male so the grouping value is two press ok now the groups are defined and data is linked to each group value press ok and here are your groups with the data now defined in your data file now let's get back to our presentation for a moment now we have defined our groups like this the next step okay we have defined and linked the data to our groups as well you just need to make sure that once you define the groups you select the file name for each of the group click the grouping variable and select the group value for each of the group moving on the next step is after reading in the data for each group you will need to uniquely label every parameter in your cfa for each group now you can imagine what pain this would be to do this individually you cannot name if you've got like although it's easier if you've got let's say four or five indicators but what if if you've got 50 60 maybe 20 30 indicators but emos has a function that will do it for you so you do not have to name each parameter yourself so what we need to do is we need to go to multiple group analysis so let's go to amos and click here multiple group analysis now once you click here it will give you a dialog box just press ok and here it will give you the parameter subsets for now just press ok and look at this all the parameters are named look at this the covariance with ccc and your factor loadings or your indicators or parameters named as well now this is for group one so one and look at this this is for group two so here you will see number two moving back to our presentation for now so here it is in the groups window you will see your groups and if you click them you will see the parameters labeled if you click female the other group you will see the parameters labeled and you will see that for the first group male it's one and for the second group they are labeled as two now initially we are testing configural invariance which is testing the unconstrained model across groups so how do we check for configural invariance let's go back to amos and here it is look at this unconstrained model so there are no constraints in your model so let's run so the model did run fine let's go to the output and let's go to our model fit here now let's move this one here a bit and let's look at this it's good well not that bad cfi tli all good let's look like at rmsca well it's quite good so your unconstrained model the model fit are good so let's further look into it in a bit more detail so this was the test for configural invariance you need to go to the model fit as we did and look at this we went to model fit and we got the model fit here here in the example output with configural invari invariance we are trying to see if the factor structure is a good fit for both groups 
and as we can see yes the factory structure was a good fit for both groups as we had good model fit indices for the unconstrained model now this tells us that the existing factor structure is a good fit for each group now we can move to our next step moving on this was the first test for measurement invariance the configural invariance test another test for testing measurement invariance is metric invariance the next model you want to assess is the metric invariance this is usually what most reviewers are concerned with in assessing invariance between groups metric invariance establishes the equivalence of basic meaning of the construct via factor loadings across the groups in a sense are your indicators measuring the same thing across the groups this is what is tested using metric invariance with the multi group analysis you will constrain the factor loadings for each group to be equal just like this the factor loadings are constrained to be equal if you double click here on measurement weights you will get this dialog box and in there you will see that your factor loadings are constrained to be equal you will then look at the change in chi square from the unconstrained model now you will compare the the chi square value for this particular model which is constrained and compare it to the unconstrained model that we just saw and you will see if there are significant differences you want the results to be insignificant you do not want any significant differences if it is significant then the meaning of your unobservable constructs is different across group you want non significance here on the upside once you have tested configural invariance it is a pretty easy process to find metric invariance now going back to emos let's see how we can test it and if we click here measurement weights we'll see that the factor loadings are constrained and in order to run the test let's calculate estimates let's go to view text and look at this here model comparisons click here and look at this this is insignificant so the measurement weights are insignificant this shows that you have achieved metric invariance the meaning of the indicators does not change with the change of groups let's go back to our theory so we have run the analysis and we got our results now this is for a different model but we got insignificant results as we wanted to and in our case the p value was insignificant so this shows that we have achieved measurement model invariance using configural invariance and metric invariance moving on now there are certain additional tests that can be performed as we mentioned earlier that there are five tests now for most research studies this is as far as you need to go in some instances further invariance testing is beneficial there are many more potential tests for invariance that build off the metric invariance test with each test more and more constraints are added to the constraint model these tests are run the same way as metric invariance test except they are listed as different models in amos now you've got scalar invariance this is where you constrain your factor loadings and measurement intercept that is mean and then you compare this to your unconstrained model in amos that constrained model is called measurement intercepts you've got factor variance invariance this test constrains the factor loadings covariances and variances of the construct across group this is called structural invariance and finally we've got error variance invariance and this is referred to as measurement residuals again with any of these tests you are trying to determine if a significant chi square difference exists between the unconstrained and constrained models the goal again here is to have non significant findings we will look into these tests in some future video now this is a very good read if you want to learn further on measurement model invariance thank you very much